you all, but I am happy to be in this space of black and brown faces and families. It's refreshing and it's very much needed at this time. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to get started. And I'm going to start with introducing myself. So my name is Tamara Gary. For those who don't know, I'm the Associate Director of, of Admissions at Westover School. And Westover School is an all-girls boarding school in Middlebury, Connecticut. So it's an hour and 30 minutes northwest of New York City, so not too far. Um, and if you are familiar with locations based on universities, as I am, it helps to know that it's 30 minutes west of Yale and 30 minutes south of Trinity. Um, but to tell you a little bit about myself, um, I am the daughter of Trina Gary and Michael Gary, both of whom have been in independent school education um, my whole life. And I just noticed that you froze. So if I freeze, let me know, but everything looks good now. Um, so I've been a faculty kid growing up through the years who lived on boarding school campuses, which is very unusual to hear from um, anyone, let alone a black girl. So I ended up myself going to a boarding school as a day student, because it was a school that my dad worked there at the time. Um, and the world of boarding schools always amazed me because of the resources that were available to me. And then when I left boarding school and realized that squash is a sport that not many people know of, and that ended up being a passion of mine, it kind of surprised me. And other opportunities I had that my friends in college had never heard of also surprised me, such as going abroad. And so the reason why I'm in admissions now is because I really want to share the, these schools and their missions and their resources with more um, families of color because they're resources that we deserve to have access to. And so that's why I am in admissions now. And that's why I had the privilege to share with you Westover School. And I also want to share, Dina Simmons is an alum of Westover. So she was very gracious not to mention Westover, but I would have not mind at all if she had, because her experience is her experience. And I had a very similar experience when I was in boarding school as well. Um, and that is also why we're part of RISE, because we want to um, share with families how to be advocates for their daughters, for their kids in these spaces. Because while it is tough, I think they sh families should still go for it. Because like I said, the resources here are for, they, we need to take advantage of them. So, um, and Dina Simmons came back on campus about three years ago to be our graduation speaker. So she's a proud alum of Westover for us to call her an alum. I'm happy to call her that. So I'm actually going to now dive into where what Westover is. Um, and I have some slides too. So I'm going to share my screen. And I have quite a few slides, but I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly because I wanna be able to um, answer what a, whatever questions you have and also talk about how things have changed given COVID um, because that's really important. All right, so as I mentioned, Westover School is in Middlebury, Connecticut, and it's all girls school. Some facts and figures about the school. There are um, 189 students who attend Westover School, 116 of which are boarding students and 73 are day students. So it's about a 60-40 split there. 30% of the student body are international students coming from all over, they represent 20 different countries. So Australia, Mexico, China, Vietnam, Kenya, Rwanda. We have 23% of our student body is our students of color. And they're also coming from all over in the country, but predominantly from New York City and from Massachusetts. I'm gonna switch the slide here. This is a more expansive picture of the school. The school was built in 1909. The mission of the school is to motivate, to challenge smart, motivated girls to become confident, connected young women. And as you can see, that connected piece is ingrained in the architecture itself. Unlike many boarding schools, the dormitories are in the main building. So they're on the third and second floor and they're divided by grades. So there's a freshman corridor, sophomore corridor, junior corridor, senior corridor. Of course, as the years went on, we expanded to um, add some buildings. So we have a gym in a separate building. We have a performing arts center in a separate building. And we also have a pre-engineering program called WISE, which stands for Women in Science and Engineering. And that's also in a separate building um, that's in the bushes. It's hard to see in this image here. 
So who is a Westover girl? A Westover girl is a girl who likes to dive into new things and who's not afraid to do so, while at the same time being passionate about things and having a love of learning. Um, our core values at Westover are strength of character, as I mentioned, a passion for learning, women's empowerment and community. And this image here is a picture of our girls um, in, uh, in protests against uh, climate, well, for climate, against climate change. Um, and so this was a large protest here. And what they did is they created an awesome banner um, for what they believed in and stood across the school and um, attracted some great attention. And so that's what our girls are in a nutshell. They're activists um, and they're also very involved. We have a strong leadership team of students and our assemblies are led by our student leaders, which is something that really resonated with me because at all the boarding schools I attended, the assemblies were led by faculty. Whereas here, the first people who stand up are eight student heads of schools. So that is something that's been refreshing for me to see and to watch the girls grow through those leadership positions through their years at Westover. Programming that makes Westover unique. I could go on and on, but a wise person told me to always give information in groups of three. So I'm gonna share with you three main programs that make Westover unique. And the first one that I'm gonna talk about is actually the second one listed here, which is Women in Science and Engineering. And I alluded to this program earlier. So this is um, an engineering program, essentially. And it's, not, it's for all students. They don't have to have any pre-knowledge of engineering. The first class in, that they would take is pass-fail. And the first project would be to build a boat out of cardboard and duct tape, as you see in this picture here. And that's always a fun event to watch the students test out their boats. Um, and then as they continue through the program, they take advanced classes like computer science, AP computer science and physical and biomedical engineering as well. And by their senior year, they're presenting on anything that they want. Some design their own video games and they present those games to the whole student body. And others in the past have done research on plastics. So it's really fascinating to see what these girls learn and also the research skills that they glean from it. The other program I wanna talk about is our IIG program, which stands for Invest in Girls. Um, and this program is a three-year program, so from sophomore year to senior year, the students are engaged in this program. And the curriculum consists of two workshops and two uh, field trips. And those field trips are to places like the New York Stock Exchange, uh, Goldman Sachs, J.P. Morgan. Um, and what they're learning about is personal investments, personal finances, business, and philanthropy. It's a class that I honestly should be taking now. And <laughs> lastly, the Raisin Center. Uh, the Raisin Center is, um, our, it's called Raisin Center for Global Justice, and it's called Raisin Center because we had a wonderful alum who donated money to the program. Um, this program's purpose is to ensure that the Westover community um, engages with the world beyond its walls through a focus on community service, diversity, environmental sustainability, and global programs. Oops, look at me, I'm not even switching my slides for you. Oh, I was still on that slide then. All right, which brings me to this slide. Diversity, equity, and inclusion work at Westover because it is work. We need to educate not just students, but faculty and parents um, as well on all things regarding diversity, equity, inclusion. So I'm gonna talk in more detail now about that. So Westover School has a program here devoted to educating both faculty and students. Uh, through school-wide curriculum on the importance and practice of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and Westover has a DEI team, which consists of our director of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Her name is Mary Taylor Lewis. She's been doing great things at Westover. I'm so happy to have her at the school. She's been working at the school for two years. And the team also consists of all the faculty of color at the school, and as well as our white allies who have all attended POCC. Um, this team leads diversity workshops during each faculty meeting. And this is new, thanks to Mary Taylor Lewis. And then we also have a white anti-racist educators group because the work starts with the faculty. It really, really, really does. Um, so our white anti-racist educators group, also known as WHERE, they meet every month um, and they're reading books such as White Fragility and talking about it. There's a whole curriculum behind this program. 
Um, also, Mary Taylor Lewis, our Director of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion, leads our hiring process, which surprisingly was not the case back in the day for Westover. That is recent. And as a result, our numbers for Black faculty have drastically increased. So now what that means is now we have three faculty in the classroom. It's sad, but that's how it's increased. And then we also have um, staff of color. Myself, our dean of students is a woman of color and a UPenn fellow. Um, our counseling, our entire counseling team are black women. And that's about eight of us right there. Uh, but I do want to specify that three are in the classroom. And I think all families should be asking that question of schools, how many black teachers are there, teachers specifically. Um, the work that we do for our students, so each year, our Director of Diversity, Equity, Inclusion, I'm just gonna say her name, Mary, she leads workshops for each grade so that these students have the vocabulary to discuss uh, things regarding diversity. Because like I said, our student body, 33% of them are international. So not many of them are aware of systematic racism, what that even means, what does it mean to be racist, et cetera. So she's equipping the students with the vocabulary from the very first week of school. We wanna make no assumptions that students already know about it. We're just gonna educate them right then and there. We also have an affinity group for our students. It's, uh, our black affinity group is called WALSA, which stands for uh, Westover African and Latina Student Association. It's our biggest affinity group. 30 students are in it. And I forgot to mention, we also have the same for our black faculty, which has been great for me. Um, we also, in our, let me talk a little bit about our affinity group. So the student affinity group, they meet monthly. And that is a space where they hang out, where they chill, where they talk about what they're experiencing in, these, in this white institution. It's necessary, because as Dina said, these institutions were made to exclude us. They weren't made to include us. So there's a lot of dismantling that unfortunately the students are doing. Um, but these are the spaces in which we talk about it. And these are also the spaces where we support them. Um, and they, we have in the, um, the faculty support them as well. Um, one great event that, they, in addition to hanging out, they also plan events. And so one event that they have annually, it's called Caloris. And this event is a celebration of the students' heritage. It's a parade with their flags around their backs. It's music, cultural music, a food of their culture. It's one big party, and they invite other affinity groups from nearby schools to attend with them. It's a good time. Um, it's probably their favorite of the year. Um, another event that they had this year was a hair event, hair care. And this was also very popular, probably also because they received free samples provided to them by Tracy Ellis Ross the power of a direct message in Instagram, never underestimate it. Um, but they also received, uh, they also got to talk to black faculty about their hair journey and we all presented pictures of how we look when we were younger, and why we ended up going natural if we went natural, or why we are, have straight hair, have straight hair now. Um, so that opened up a great, allowed for a really great organic conversation uh, with the students. And then education for the students. We of course have, um, Six students attend SDLC each year, along with all the faculty of color. They are funded to go to the OCC, and that was not the case in the past. Only a couple could, but now we all can. Thanks to Mary Taylor Lewis, as well as, of course, some of our, our white faculty. Um, let me just make sure I'm not missing anything. All right. And then, of course, there are also regional um, SDLC meetings as well. So I'm going to switch gears to talk about how Westover has been affected this spring with COVID and some of the changes we made and some of the things that we are going to put in place going forward. The image you see here is a picture that was drawn by one of our students and I think one of our art classes, the assignment was to create kind of a, an image that represented how their spring term, oops, my apologies looks and as you can see this student was in quarantine so this was a chinese student who once school was closed had to get on a plane and be quarantined for 14 days and the next picture is, is food when they were quarantined they were in a hotel and uh they didn't see anyone for 14 days and the food that they received was just placed right outside their door for them to open grab and 
go inside. And unfortunately, this would be experienced for quite a few of our Chinese students, one of whom was my advisee. And so it made it really hard to stay on top of their work. So for that reason, we went past bail. And of course, we want it to be an equitable situation for all our students. And many students, their home situation is not conducive to studying. So it wouldn't have been fair to require them to uphold straight A's. Um, it just wasn't conceivable for them to do so. So we went to a pass-fail system. Um, we went to a four-day week, so no Friday classes. Um, instead of relying on Google, because a lot of our Chinese students needed a VPN to access it and didn't have a VPN, we just used our database called um, the Hub through Blackboard. And so they could access their recorded classes through that database, and it was accessible for all. Um, did our students have laptops? Yes, it's actually a requirement on day one of coming to Westover. So they all had asked, um, a laptop. And then on top of that, they had weekly advisory meetings, which is something they normally have in person. Um, but it was even more important to have when during this, um, this spring term of social distancing and distance learning. And for me, for a number of my advisees, I actually met with them twice a week. In terms of how we adjusted the financial requirement from families, we actually provided them reimbursements for boarding, if they were a boarder, and for their meals as well. And then for our day student families, they got reimbursed for their meals because their students weren't at school. Um, some things that we adjusted to socially, um, we provided health tips on a weekly basis from our health center. Um, there was communications going out to all the families every Thursday and Sunday with updates. There were um, exercise classes in the afternoon, assembly every week, chapel on Thursday still. We still wanted to keep a lot of our communal events um, intact, and so we just created a virtual platform for those events. And those went really well. We had a virtual graduation, it went really well. Award ceremonies virtually. Um, this whole experience has really enlightened or made it clear to me that this community is one that accepts change really well and is very flexible and it's been heartwarming to see. So I want to now talk about our summer program because we're going to have one <laughs> and it might not pertain to the families on this call because it will just be a day program um, but it's important to recognize that not many schools are doing a, let me move this over, not doing a summer program due to COVID, um, but we have some guidelines um, that have been provided us from uh, Governor Lamont of Connecticut that we can abide by to establish a summer program. Um, so our summer program is gonna be for day families only, and it's for guys and girls, because the purpose of it is to really just service the community, to get kids in a space where they can catch up on work and be prepared for the fall, and to allow parents to go to work. Um, so the safety, health protocol, and guidelines for the summer program are the following. Um, we're going to limit the program to 50 students each week. There are classes in the morning, afternoon activities, and there are only 10 students allowed in those spaces. All faculty are going to be required to wear masks, and soon we might have to require that of our students, although um, the Connecticut government hasn't required it yet. Um, all students before entering campus will get their temperature checked by our two nurses standing out front. They're going to use a forehead uh, thermometer. So some of those are the safety protocols that are in place, and our maintenance crew has already done the hard lifting and the hard work to kind of reassess the capacity of each space, given that everyone has to be six feet apart. So that's some of the work that we're doing in response to COVID. Um, and then lastly, applying during COVID. It's not the same as we know. You can't go on campus. You can't be face-to-face -face with a tour guide, with a student, with an admissions officer, unfortunately. You can't see the dorms for yourself or the squash court or the basketball court, whatever it may be. Um, but this is how we recommend students uh, still apply and get to learn more about the school during this time. For Westover, we have a virtual admission center. Through the center, you can actually set up um, or request a chat face-to-face. -face. So we use Zoom, the Zoom chat with our admissions officers. And in terms of attending a tour, we're gonna have a virtual tour on the website with narration very soon. We currently just have the virtual tour with music in the background and soon it'll be narrated by our ambassadors. 
Um, and then you're still going to apply through the standard application online and still apply for that financial aid. We are recognizing an increase in financial aid for our families, of course, given the times it's necessary. Um, so that is something that we are offering, of course, because we want to keep our families at the school and we really still want to provide this opportunity for our families to fight, despite the kind of economic devastation we're experiencing at the moment. Um, so that's it for my slides. So I'd love to open it up to any questions you may have, and I'm going to stop sharing, see if I can do that right. And I know I just powered through it. Um, I hope you have some questions, and if you feel comfortable doing so, you can write it in the chat box, or you can even unmute yourself and go for it. We had a couple of questions come in. Um, one of them is how how many um, Latinx girls do you have, and do you have any Latinx professors? Mm. We um, have one, one Latinx professor. She's from Long Island. She's also an alum of the school. Um, I can't remember which class, but in terms of students, I actually don't have that number um, known to me, and I would take a horrible guess if I went for it, but that is a number that I do want to know, and so I'll find that out for you. That's a great question. Um, and another question was um, regarding the unique program slide, are they able to take the course every year? or only one per year? And are the sports required or options? The sports are, oh, well, so let me answer the unique program question. So for those programs, those are classes that are offered, um, each, there are classes offered in each program each semester. So ideally the student would be involved in the program throughout their four years. So for WISE, for instance, a student can, be involved in that program all four years. So that means they're taking a class in the WISE program each semester. Now, those classes are in addition to their core classes. So if it becomes too heavy, they can opt to not take a class a semester um, and they won't graduate with the WISE certificate that shows that they were in the program all four years, but they still will get the benefit of taking a comp sci class or an engineering course. Um, which is still beneficial if they want to go into engineering. So I hope that answers that question. And then for the Invest in Girls program, um, they would have to be involved in that program those three years that it's offered. So sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. And that's a program where the class is twice a month. So it's not as, it's not a, as heavy a load as the WISE program, which by the way stands for Women in Science and Engineering. I don't know if I, I mentioned that. And your next question about sports. So our sports um, period is from 3.30 to 5.30. And in that period, a student can take a sport or they can do theater because that happens at the same time. So other options other than a theater and a sports team are um, dance, yoga, fitness and weight training. So there are other options other than being involved in, on a team that uh, students can can do and some of our students do it independent sport. We have some really strong athletes um, squash players and a water skier who's nationally ranked and so in the fall she actually just focuses on water skiing. She's a day student, she's a day student so she goes um, home in the afternoon to do that. So that's a, a exception to the curriculum there. Not exception but something we allow. Um, great question. <laughs> Yeah, squash is a passion of mine. I forgot to mention that in addition to being associate uh, director of admissions, I'm a senior class dean. So I apologize if I seem frazzled because frazzled, we just had commencement and I had to plan the whole thing with my dean of students and it was quite hectic, um, but it went well. And I'm also the varsity squash coach. So I do a lot of recruiting for squash and then of course training the, the athletes. Um, but yeah, squash is, squash is awesome. <laughs> One last one. Um, it said, did she mention this group isn't able to attend summer week? Um, is it only one week? Mm. So the summer program is 
a three sessions and each session is two weeks long and it starts July 13th and the last session ends August 21st or 27th I can't remember which date um, and so the way it's structured is there will be two classes in the morning and two afternoon activities those activities could be anything from yoga squash camp games um, tennis is offered and for classes the classes that are offered are math writing science and ssat prep and there are three packages to the summer program you can take the morning classes and that's it or you can do the afternoon activities and that's it or you can do both so there are three different packages someone can uh, sign up for and it's monday through friday great question i'm really excited for this program um, it's gonna in a way be a, a test run too for us for the fall because of course we want our students to come back on campus and if we're able to stay safe by um, following these guidelines that'll be very um, reassuring for us going into the fall and this is our campus behind me <laughs> I'm curious to hear from you all, what is it you are looking for in a school for your, for your daughter or for your children in general? What does that school have to have? And feel free to answer in the chat box or you can unmute yourself because we're a small group here, whatever you feel comfortable doing. It's so interesting when putting this uh, together, these slides, I was thinking when I'm in a school fair scenario, I normally don't have this much time, so this is really nice, but also I usually get a chance to know who it is I'm speaking to before I go into all things Westover and what we have to offer. So that's one thing that's a little tricky about this platform, but like I said, I normally don't have this much time, so I am so thankful for that. <laughs> Some questions that um, we get often on our at Virtual Admissions Center, we have a FAQ section. So for frequently asked questions, um, and we get quite a few questions about our WISE program, if it's something that's for those who are passionate uh, science students and engineers. And I always respond, it's for anyone who is curious about it. And as I mentioned in response to that previous question, um, students don't have to take every class that that program, program offers. They can just take the classes that interest them and still reap the benefit of learning that material. But I wish I had a, a program like that when I was in high school because the term, the word engineering was always intimidating to me when I was that age. And seeing in the first class that the first project is building a boat out of cardboard, I would have jumped at the opportunity. Um, some other questions that are asked of us um, are in regards to our dorm and kind of what that looks like. And as I mentioned, all the students are divided in grades and in corridors, but in each corridor, there's a dorm parent. And essentially that dorm parent is kind of a parent to those girls. Um, another, another thing that makes Westover unique is that we're not a triple threat school, which many boarding schools are. And so what that means is if you're triple threat, a teacher is also a dorm parent, who's also a coach, in addition to being an advisor. So kind of like quadruple threat. At Westover, our dorm parents, their full-time job is to be in the dorm because our students might need that attention more 
our dorm parents are there for snack time between 9.30 and 10. That's when students gather together in the room, they chat about life, they eat food, sometimes they're watching their favorite show, maybe it's March Madness. It does create for a very homey um, dorm experience. And as a result of the fact that we're not triple threat, our teachers have time to set aside for one-on-one -on -one conferencing with students. So oftentimes at these schools, our teachers are spread very thin. They're teaching sometimes four preps, and sometimes they're teaching an English creative course and a math course at the same time. And then they're running to basketball practice because they're coaching the thirds basketball team. Here, right after classes are done, the teachers are in their classrooms around to be available for those students who need that extra help, who need a one-on-one -on -one conferencing time with them. And then we have our advisors, of course. Faculty are advisors, staff are advisors. I have four advisees of my own, and we meet weekly with our students. And if a student needs additional assistance with work and one-on-one -on -one conferencing isn't enough with the teacher, we have learning support. Um, and our learning support staff, led by great woman, Katie Guthrie, um, handles executive functioning for the students. So a lot of the times if the students are struggling, it's actually because of a lack of organization. And it's their first time living away from home, so it's of course very understandable. So Katie will work with them on, okay, here's the planner, plan out your day. What do you have to do next? Um, and just help them um, get organized to be more prepared for their classes. Yes, so the comment here is my daughter is preferring a smaller group. She feels she's heard more than a bigger setting. Okay, do they get international experience? Yes, so Westover is a small all girls school, 189 girls. And in regards to um, if students have experience uh, traveling internationally, yes. We have a whole global, global program, exchange program, um, exchanges with nine different countries. Um, Australia is one of them, Japan is one of them, France, Spain, um, Rwanda, South Africa. I have a student who just graduated from South Africa last year and had a wonderful time. So these happen at different times of the year, depending on where they're going to exchange. So Australia's exchange program is two months of the summer. The program to South Africa is half a half of a semester in the winter. So we have two, I think we have no time left because I see that we had two minutes of about two minutes ago. Um, so I, unless there's any other questions, I hope I was able to answer most of your questions. And I'm so thankful that you guys were here um, in, this, in this room so I could share my story and my mission and of course share about Westover School.